Hi, my name is Steve Parr. I'm a Vancouver business lawyer, and today we're gonna to take a look at non-competition and non-solicitation clauses. These types of clauses are often found in employment agreements, contractor agreements, and also shareholder and partnership agreements. So they're very important to understand. So a non-competition clause is often found in an employment agreement. So in that context, the employer is prohibiting the employee from competing with the business, both for the term of the employment and for a period of time after the employment is over. So whether the employee leaves or is fired, it doesn't really matter, but for a period of time, usually six months to a year, that employee is gonna be prohibited from competing with the business. This clause can further be scoped down on a geographic basis. So this can only take effect, say, within the city of Vancouver or within some other parameter. So say within 15 kilometers of the company headquarters. Now the thing that both employers and employees should know about non-competition clauses is that they may not actually be enforceable. So that is if the contract comes under dispute, if somebody alleges that another party has breached the non-competition clause and decides to take them to court and this contract shows up before a judge, the judge may not actually enforce that provision. And the reason for that is because this type of restriction represents a restraint on trade. It's restricting the ability of the employee to go out into the economy and participate in it. It's restricting their ability to be entrepreneurial or to even join up with another company that is competing in the same industry. And the courts don't like those types of restrictions. However, what's easier to enforce is what's called a non-solicitation clause. And these clauses work similarly to non-competition clauses. So the drafting will look something like for the term of the employee's engagement with the company and for a period of time thereafter, usually six months to a year again, although this could be up to two years or even three years, the employee is prohibited from soliciting the company's customers, its clients, its suppliers, other employees, other contractors. In essence, it's saying this employees cannot poach the contacts of the business. And this is a much more narrowly drafted restraint. So it doesn't actually prohibit the person from going out there and competing with that business. They can, they can strike out on their own, they can do whatever they like, but they just can't solicit the customers, the employees, and all the other business contacts from the original company. So that kind of constraint is, is looked upon more favorably by the courts, so it has a higher chance of being enforceable. So for both non-competition and non-solicitation clauses, if you are considering putting them into your employment agreements or any other type of business agreement that is vital to your business, it's essential that you review them with a lawyer first, that ideally you have a lawyer draft them because they're very technical and they can turn on recent developments in case law. So if you have any other questions about them, please feel free to drop a comment below or you can book a consultation with me. Thanks for watching today and please subscribe.